because I don't want to relive ever the day you found out. Um, that's probably the worst day of my life. Well, now for what you all came here for, pornography. Really? Uh <laughs> I didn't, I didn't come here for that. <laughs> to talk about pornography. <laughs>
<laughs> I get it. You get it? I mean, really, it's just so destructive, right? You're talking about the self-loathing and the and the lack of self-worth that you had, right? Yeah. And so often the other partner feels that way too, like something must, must be wrong with me. You were talking about the judgment and the shame and stripping that away and that being a critical first step in the person who is wanting to make changes and do do something differently. Well, and to the point of if your spouse is struggling with, with pornography use, this habit thrives in darkness. Like it thrives in secrecy of, will I be left? Will I be rejected? Will I be judged if I come forward with this? Um, you know, when we were f finally able to talk about it and I knew that I could tell you anytime I was struggling, that is what broke it, you know? Um, that level of shame, I want to say right here, right now, if you're struggling with porn, so it's commonplace. It's everywhere. You've got a phone, you've got a laptop. It's designed to hook you. It's designed to be exciting. Uh, we are sexual beings and being curious about that is it's not shameful. But the shame is what drives a lot of secrecy. It also drives a lot of the relationship problems. Like you were saying, if my spouse is using this, then I feel ashamed. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've failed them as a spouse, right? Instead of this is like having a temper problem. This is like having, I mean, any sort of struggle, it's human. And if we own it and we, ta and we don't blame it on anybody else and we ask for support and changing, that's where the magic happens. I think that's really beautiful and vulnerable. And I'm, I know that's gonna support uh, a lot of people who are watching. Oh yeah, videos. talking about this on camera today <laughs> is not my favorite thing I've ever done. Aww. <laughs> oh, okay, well, thank you. <laughs> so cute. So how do you work through it? Like, there obviously has to be individual accountability because the question is, do I stay, do I go? You know, maybe this has affected a relationship, a marriage for decades, maybe it's something new. And maybe you said it, this has been in all of your marriages, but it right. looked different, so how do you decide to stay or go? Yeah, um, and, and to be clear, it was never the single behavior, right? Like it was never the deciding factor. And in one of my marriages, it was really challenging because it was just an assumed shared value right? Like it was a problem for me and outwardly he would say it was a problem for him. Mm. But in his behavior, it was something he intentionally sought out right. and that went on for years, right? And so that's where it was a problem for me. It wasn't a problem for him. And so it needs to be a problem for, for both of you. Whereas in our case, it definitely was a problem for both of us. I mean, I'd like to hear more about the reasons why I mean, I already know, but I'd like for everyone to hear more of the reasons why it was a problem for you. But for me, I'm somebody who stands for healthy relationships. I mean, that's my whole life. And I'm fairly, I'm fairly passionate about women's rights and not just equality for women, but opportunity and respect for women and the way I was raised to treat women. And every time I was watching porn, I was like, this is very contrary to who I am. This is very contrary to who I stand, what I stand for. And I was feeling like, I was a hypocrite. And you have a breakup story to talk yes. about this. I, I came to this place of looking at porn like an abusive relationship. Like I, right? was, like I was with a woman who wasn't good for me. Um, and the thing about, <laughs> here's the thing. If we look at porn as like just a negative, it's actually mm -hmm. harder to leave it because we're denying the fact that people consume porn because they get something out of it. Well, and when you see it as a negative, there's judgment associated with it. Yes, that. yes. And I looked at it, and the more I looked at it with judgment, then there was shame. And then because mm -hmm. I felt the shame, I would consume porn to escape the shame, and the cycle would just go on and on and on. Yeah. And I looked at this as like, no, listen, porn. We've had some good times. You've helped me through some tough times. But ultimately, this is a toxic relationship that's not in line with who I want to be, right? It's true that you're always there for me, but you always take more than you give as well, right? That was, and I actually, <laughs> no, I actually sat down and did a mental exercise, and I, uh, I had a conversation out loud with porn as if it was a girlfriend. Yeah. And the reason for that is because it was important to me to be truthful. And and if and honestly, there are things to enjoy about porn. That's why people watch it. But I wanted to make a trade, right? I wanted to make It wasn't serving you. You recognized it, it as yeah. a coping mechanism and you said this isn't a coping mechanism I want in my life anymore. The way I see sexuality, the way I see women, the way I see my wife, the way I see myself, like I don't like any of that. Yeah, so, it was out of an alignment, out yeah. of integrity with who you wanted to be. And I, and then the more I learned about the industry, I was like, oh, I can't support this, you know. Right. And so all of this coalesced into, I'm going to make a trade, and I'm mm -hmm. going to lose the little rush of doing something wrong, and I'm going to lose the little rush of variety from all these carefully packaged products, 
and I'm going to trade that for peace, and I'm going to trade that for being happy with how I look, and I'm going to trade that for a healthy view of sexuality and healthy view of relationships, and I'm going to trade that to focus all of my affections on my spouse. And that is the reason why I broke it off. And sometimes, you know, I ignore her texts. <laughs> those, <laughs> like, those flirty pictures that pop up on your phone. No, but that's the thing. Like, you could, if you want to carry the breakup right, analogy right. through, like, you could block her number, and or you could, you know, you could, you could put blocks on your computer. You can do things to keep yourself safe. But the fact is, if I broke up with a woman and I wanted to get back together with her, I could unblock her number. I could find mm -hmm. a way to get in touch with her. Like, the real thing is here. Right? The real thing is, is reminding myself, because I'm still tempted. I've got a different video called How to Get Free from a Porn Addiction, where I talk about the strategies that I use anytime I just feel that, that urge. Yeah. Well, and it's worthwhile to note, like, anytime you're changing a behavior, you're rewiring your brain, right? Mm -hmm. Those pathways, your coping mechanisms. Yeah. Like, and the more you do a behavior, the easier it is to keep doing it, right? Yeah. So that's why the first time you said no, was so much harder than saying yes. But after the first time you said no, the second time got easier and easier. And now it's significantly easier to say no because you've said no hundreds of times. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely true. On your end, um, why was porn against your values? And what do you think is helpful? I mean, I, what do you think is helpful for someone in your position? Yeah. So there's a lot of layers to it. And it's fascinating to hear your side of the experience and all the insecurities, right? That yeah. basically built the foundation of that relationship, right? Like mm. your relationship with porn. Like it was based on insecurities, right? Yeah. And if, and it's so easy for a reflection of that relationship to be reflected over onto me and to build that foundation on insecurities. And it's just another way um, in which partnerships, healthy relationships, families get torn apart, yeah. right? And so like my background's in construction. And so I will tie everything back to construction. It's such a poor foundation, right? Yeah. And, and to build your foundation on a strong self-worth. Now that doesn't mean we hide from those insecurities. Like they're painful, they're hard. Um, they bring tears, they feel super vulnerable, but I can guarantee you anybody who has a spouse who struggles with that, that brings up a lot of painful insecurities. Yeah. And so addressing those in a healthy way, right? Instead of turning to your own coping mechanisms, whatever they may be. Uh, and oh, I want to rephrase that. It's not that turning to a coping mechanism is a bad thing. We all have coping mechanisms. And I, they can be healthy. And they can be healthy. Yeah. I use food as a coping he mechanism regularly. I, I do, I eat a lot less ice cream when my children are out of town or on vacation without me. Um, <laughs> and I bring her food when I want things to go well, like anything to go well. I'm like, here, I've brought you food. It's recognizing whether or not your coping mechanisms are serving you and detaching your self-worth from another person's behavior. Yeah. Stereotypically as a female, as a, a wife or a mother, that is very, very hard for women to do. Mm. Um, and there is a huge growth opportunity in doing so and building your self-worth and your value as a person on who you are instead of what you look like. That's really powerful. And it goes more and more the reverse too, where you have women who are consuming pornography and if you know right. if they're in heterosexual relationships, their male spouses feel insecure. Right. But this, you know, this transcends sexualities as well. And that's the thing is I'm I'm I think sex is amazing. And sexuality is a wonderful thing. Like, I am not anti-sexuality. I'm not scared of nudity. I don't see art and be right. like, oh, it's not, it's not a prudish thing. It comes down to what do I take in here that affects how I act out here. It doesn't, it doesn't cause it. It doesn't determine it. I mean, I'm still the agent of my life, but everything that we take in affects us. It just does. And so what do I want to be taking in? If you and your partner can be can get on the same page, right? Where it is a problem for both of you, then you can be on the same team, right? Um, and depending on your dynamics, your experiences, I've spoke spoken with women who this is something they've dealt with for decades, right? And it's hurtful and it's raw and it goes deep and there's so much hope and then it gets dashed again. Build your support system around you, whatever that looks like for you. The partner that's trying to overcome this challenge, they need accountability, right? That does not mean that I need to be your accountability partner. If we have the type of, of relationship 
where I feel comfortable doing that, great. I can be the accountability partner. But if it is too raw, if it is too real, uh, yeah. get a therapist, get a clergyman, like get a best friend. So there if, are groups to, for this. Like you can have a sponsor. Right. And the first step in, in every aspect, and even when you come back to this, is removing the judgment. It is removing the shame for both of you, because neither one of you can learn and grow and use this as a healing opportunity. If you're stuck in judgment, all that will do is bring more shame and more guilt. And speaking to that, um, I've never really brought this up, um, and now I'm doing it on camera, so that's smart. Um, because I don't want to relive ever the day you found out. Um, that's probably the worst day of my life. Um, but it meant so much to me because I was so scared for so long of what you would think if you found out. And you weren't okay with it, but you weren't shaming. Um, you very much approached me as, I know my husband's a good man, so if he's struggling with this, what's going on with him? And it's not to say like you you throw yourself under the altar to, for whatever my needs are um, because you were obviously hurt too. But you didn't approach it with shame. And you were so understanding, which is not the same thing as condoning. And I wasn't afraid anymore after that um, to talk with you if I was struggling, um, to talk with you if I was tempted. Now yeah. you're going to make both of us cry. Get the Kleenex. <laughs> and, uh, and that meant everything to me and still does. And I mean, you, you didn't even have to make it very clear that day what your position was because I already knew. Um, and it was a problem for both of us, which is why we were still... A match even though that was a struggle of mine so thank you you're welcome sorry for making you cry on camera gosh darn it yeah. <laughs> to the camera and cry a little and as long as we're alone we we feel hopeless right but once we're not alone there's hope right and because yeah. we all have moments of weakness and as long as we have someone or something we can turn to in those moments of weakness uh there's hope and the conversation that that we had was for me it it it's not something i wanted in my relationship um, and so the fact that it was there was a problem but that wasn't a deal breaker problem the deal breaker was the lying or the secrecy, right? right? And that that's when you and I had a very honest conversation about as long as we can be honest with each other about our challenges, that this is something we can work through. Yeah. And so that would be... And we did. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so that would be my last piece of advice is um, as long as you can be on the same page and and you can have ground rules and guidelines about what this looks like. Um, but I think so often we're not on the same page, not you and I, but couples aren't yeah. on the same page or it's a problem for one and not for the other. And the one spouse, you know, just keeps holding on and just feels like they're being beat up. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's, it's okay to leave when it's not a fit because so often it's just not that one aspect that's not a fit. There's a lot of other things. And it's not worth your your self worth and your mental well being uh, to be in an unhealthy relationship where you don't feel loved, respected, and safe. So to that point, like should you stay or should you go? Uh, we've got a whole program on healing from infidelity that we've built out for you, starting with a master class that is available free for you uh, to gauge. Is this a relationship I should stay in? Now, infidelity we define as getting a need met outside of the relationship that should be reserved only for the relationship. And even though infidelity exists on a spectrum, porn is porn use is on that spectrum if your value is that that's infidelity. And right. so healing from infidelity, in the description below, there's a link for our free masterclass uh, to give you some tools right out of the gate to start healing from this. Now, if you enjoyed this, we'd like to urge you to take a look at this other Married to a Therapist video. How does the brain protect itself from traumatic experience? As always, like, subscribe, click that bell so you don't miss a thing. You'll get notified every time one of our videos drops. So until next time, 
Remember to keep shining. We need your light. Oh, here it comes. Like I told you it would. Video sliding in, and you're gonna watch it. Cause you ain't got nothing to do all day. Mended light videos all day, er day. You guys don't even know this, but like we're totally dancing right now and, <laughs> oh crap. <laughs>